unstake this axle nut. To do that, I use a variety of tools. Mainly I find this all comes in really handy. To at least get it started. And then just some kind of flathead screwdriver. I think that's good. This is a 32 millimeter axle nut. I'm going to remove the caliper, but you don't actually have to to change the axle, though it will make it a bit easier. All right, I think that's gonna keep it out of my way. It's time to move on to the castle nut on the ball joint. I'm just gonna take off the rotor. And right down there. First we gotta take out this collar pin. Sometimes I have to hammer them out from one side, other times I can yank them out and I need to loosen this castle nut, which I believe is a 19. Then I like to bring it down about even with the nut. Get another jack under there. This cloth is just there to kind of protect the jack. And I'm going to try a trick I saw recently. Take the round end of a wrench, stick it in between the ball joint clamp and the A-arm. Like so. And then when you lower the jack that's supporting the castle nut, it pops the ball joint out and then lets the wrench go. Let me see how it works out. Well, it's holding my wrench in there, but that's about it. Maybe a few tappy taps. There we go, that popped it. Take off the castle nut. Remove the sway bar link. 12 millimeter on both sides. Move the axle out of the way. Next we're going to remove this inner roll pin. You would ideally want a punch that's the same outer diameter as the roll pin. An old drill bit works pretty well and a short stubby sledge is extremely helpful. Put the car in neutral so that you can spin this and get at the roll pin to punch out. Going in over the A-arm. Before you install an axle, get some grease and cover these splines with it. And do grease these inner splines as well. There is a tapered end to the roll pin and a flat end. The tapered end gets driven in, just as there is a tapered hole in the axle and you want to drive the tapered end into the tapered hole. There's an uneven number of splines inside of the axle. This hole will only line up one way. So if you find yourself trying to pound in this roll pin and it's not going anywhere, it's because you don't actually have the threads lined up. Rotate the transmission side or the axle 180 degrees. Try again. So first I'm going to thread the axle in over the A-arm. But remember you want to line up that tapered hole. I'm going to turn the axle like this and I can see the tapered hole on the inner shaft. This is lining up, so I'm just going to slide it right in. I'm going to grab my roll pin. I'm going to get it started. And there you have it. It's all the way in the hole. It's all the way in. If you look at the other side, you can see it was driving some of the grease out. So now to put the axle in, take that castle nut off. I'm going to pop the ball joint. Try not to damage the seal when you're doing this. Again, push the A-arm down. Get everything to pop back together. Make sure it's all friends. I like to never seize the threads and the axle nut. Now we're just going to get this started. I'm going to go ahead and reinstall the castle nut. It's already got some never on there. And I looked it up online. 
And I believe the correct spec is 33 foot pounds and then continue less than 60 degrees to align the cotter pin hole. Install the cotter pin, reinstall the rotor and caliper. Here's what I found on Nasiak as the torque spec for the axle nut, 137 foot-pounds. And it does say always tighten axle nut before installing wheel on the vehicle. If wheel is installed before it is tightened, it may damage the wheel bearing. Also note it says while depressing the brake pedal. So I'm going to have the transmission in gear and I'm going to have someone hold the brake pedal while I tighten the nut. Okay, hold the brake. Okay, now I'm going to peen in the axle nut so that it stays nice and secure. I'm going to use that broken screwdriver and my small sledge. I'm going to switch to my big old screwdriver. Now we do have to reinstall the sway bar link, and that's going to be made a bit easier if we raise the A arm to the proper height. It can be a bit of a pain to bend it back in there. I'll try not to damage the rubber. for a test drive. Can't forget the finishing touch. Ta-da! Hey, if you're still watching, I really hope this video helped you out. If you like the video, hit the like button so other people know it's any good. If you have any feedback of any kind, please leave a comment. And if you want to see more repair videos like this, please subscribe. It'll help me grow my channel. I really appreciate it, and have a great year.